Hey there, and thanks for watching. Over the next few minutes, I'm gonna share with you Excel's new Lambda feature and how to use it to create custom functions in Excel for your real estate financial. Now, I have to admit, I'm really excited about this feature. In fact, so excited that this feature is still in beta, meaning uh, if you are using just a standard version of Excel, you won't yet have access to this feature. Now, if you would like to see and start playing around with Lambda, first, you need to make sure you have uh, Office 365, and then you come to insider.office.com and you can opt in to be an Office Insider. It's free. It really, what it means is that the version of, of Excel or, or the ver version of any of the Office uh, products that you receive are the beta version rather than the standard version. Now, once you have the beta version, you'll be able to start playing around with Lambda and that's what I have here. Now, in terms of what Lambda is, uh, in, in the simplest uh, sense, at least as it relates to Excel, it's the ability to create your own custom functions. So in real estate financial modeling, there is a variety of, of logic statements that we write over and over and over again. And those logic statements, we can then turn into our own functions and in a way, reduce duplicative formulas, make formulas simpler, reduce errors, right? Because instead of having to write those formulas over and over and over again, you write one function you input the, the values or variables that go into that function, and assuming your lambda is written correctly, all of those functions will be correct across your model. And then finally, it, once the user understands how those custom functions work, right? So you create a, a manual or, or instructions of some sort, basic users can create complex logic Without, without actually having to write the formulas themselves. They just simply use the custom functions that you've built. Now, how do we create these Lambda uh, functions? Well, I'm gonna show you that in, in a very simple way, and then I'm gonna show you an example, a very real example that I use over and over and over again in real estate financial modeling, and how to take what is a fairly complex function, a, a function that is, uh, often I run into errors because it requires um, making certain columns and certain rows relative or absolute, depending on the reference, and, and simplify it. So first, how to create a Lambda? Well, first you need a logic statement that you write regularly and, and choose that logic statement. And so the simplest would be, uh, let's say you have variable A and you have variable B and you want those two, you want A to always be multiplied by B, such that you get the result, right? So here's our variable A, and let's say it's five, and here's our variable B, and let's say it's 10. And for some reason, we, anytime we see A and anytime we see B, we always multiply those together. And so uh, we want five times 10 to equal 50. Right? Now, of course, the simplest way to do this is just simply take uh, A and multiply it by B, but follow, follow the logic here, and then we'll get to something more complex where it makes sense to create a lambda. So how would we create a lambda out of this logic statement? Well, first, we start here on just in, in any worksheet, and we type equals lambda. And this lambda function uh, dialog appears. It says creates a function value which can be called within formulas open parentheses, and then we, we first identify parameters, and once we've identified the parameters, we set the calculation. And so the parameters are the variables that go into the function, or, or the items that will be called. So in this case, uh, the first parameter is that item A, so I'm just gonna call it A, okay? The second parameter is what? It's item B, so I'll call that B. And once we've set all of the parameters, and in this case, there's only two, a and B, we then set the calculation. What's the calculation? It's A multiplied by B. Okay, we close parentheses, hit enter. Now it's gonna give us a calc error. Why? Because uh, it doesn't know what parameters to call. We've simply told it anytime you see A or anytime the user says A and B within some function, do A times B. Now we can test this by coming to the back of our Lambda, hit open parentheses, and then choose a reference for A and a reference for B. So the reference for A is what? Cell B18, comma, the reference for B is C18, close parentheses, hit enter, 
and now we get 50. So this lambda A and B, where the calculation is A times B, results in, in this case, 50. Now, how do we then turn this into a custom function? So the step one, again, was to create the lambda, which we did. Step two is to test the lambda, which we did by adding this portion at the end. Te step three now is to create a custom name for the lambda. So I'm going to come up here and let's just grab the lambda portion, ignore the test section, just right that front section, hit control C. And then we're going to create a named cell for this lambda. You're probably familiar with this feature. Come to formulas, name manager, select new, and first choose a name for this. So the name here is we're going to have a times B. Okay, that's the name for this custom function. And then under refers to, go ahead and override this and paste equals lambda A comma B comma A times B. And then we add a comment. Now this is really important because as the user begins to type our custom function, this comment will appear and it provides guidance to the user. So the comment is, in this case, uh, you know, enter, let's see, enter a comma, enter b, and that's our comment, okay? Hit okay. We close that, and now let's go ahead and write it, and we can write it over here. So we go equals a times b, and you see how now that custom function appears in our list and you'll notice there's our comment, enter A, enter B. I hit tab and there equal A times B, open parentheses. And now this is a function like any function in Excel. And we choose first A comma B, close parentheses, 50. And what's cool now is, let's say we have Let's choose a couple options. Let's do two and four and seven or eight and three and seven and two. We can just copy this down and we get 50, right? Five times 10 is 50, two times four is eight, eight times three is 24, seven times two is 14. So that's how to create a custom function. Now let's use it in a real life example. Now this is a methodology that I always follow when I'm forecasting development cash flows. So I have a cash, a development cash flow line item, say hard costs, or it could be a sub item of hard costs. And then I choose a start month, I choose an end month. Uh, I also have a length, I, I would generally have a budget line item. So let's say budget, all right, and uh, right align those. And my budget item, maybe it's a million. Let's set that blue. Okay, so development cash flow. And what I do is I first check to see if this hard cost item falls somewhere between month four or six. And so generally how I do that is I use Boolean logic. I go equals and, and this and will return a true if the current period is somewhere between four and six. Otherwise, it'll return a false. And if you're familiar with Boolean logic in Excel, a true is equivalent to a one and false is equivalent to a zero. And we can then multiply that result by some budget line item to, to model that cash flow. So here, how do I know if the current month is between four and six? Well, I go and, and then we ask, is month four, and I lock in the row F4 one two times, greater than or equal to the start month and hit F4 one, two, three times. And the current month, F4, one, two times the lock in the row, less than or equal to the end month. Hit F4, one, two, three times, close parentheses, and then I copy this out to the right. And what you're gonna see is true between months four, five, and six, false seven through 12. And then what's cool is we take that and we just multiply it by our budget, lock in the column, copy this out to the right, now what you'll see is that it outputs a, a million in four, five, and six. However, because it's three months long, we just simply come back and we divide that value by three, 
copy this out to the right. And that's now a straight line forecasting of our hard cost million dollars between four and six, four, five and six. This is logic that I use over and over and over again. So to create this Lambda function, this custom function for uh, forecasting cash flows. And in this case, I'm forecasting cash flows on a straight line basis. Uh, the first step is to identify how many parameters I have. So if I look here at my formula, I've got a current a period, I've got a start period and an end period, and then I have a budget and I have a length. So one, two, three, four, five parameters. And then I have a calculation which has already been set for me. So let's come, I don't know, up here and we're gonna type again Lambda. And first I need to identify my parameters. So the first parameter is current underscore month. Second parameter is start month. Third parameter is end month. The fourth parameter is budget amount. And the last parameter is length in months, okay? So those are my parameters and those parameters now can be called and you'll see that in a second. And then we comment and we choose the calculation. And so it goes and, and what's our first logic? We're gonna ask is the current month and notice how, because we've created the parameter and now a jump, uh, uh, automatically uh, pops up for us, is the current month greater than or equal to the start month, comma, is the current month less than or equal to the end month? Close parentheses, if it is, we're gonna multiply that by what? The budget? amount divided by the length in months. Close parentheses on our Lambda, hit enter. Of course it shows calc. And so let's go ahead and test this. The first thing we need is current, uh, let's see, we need our current month, that's here. Then comes start month here, then end month here, and then budget amount here, and then length there. Close parentheses. And it's zero, if we copy this out to the right, uh, oops, I needed to lock all those cells in. So actually, um, let's see, the I6, like so, like so, and then these two as well. Let me copy this out to the right, and sure enough, We've created a custom function and it simply required those five references. So now it's a matter of turning this into, so we created the, the custom Lambda, now let's uh, name it. So we come out here, we're just gonna copy that, go to formulas, name manager. We're gonna create new and this one I'm gonna call uh, forecast underscore straight line, SL, and then paste here. So the comments are first goes current month, then start month. Let me type this all out. Then end month. Then budget amount, and finally, the length in months. Hit OK. Okay, now we can close that. Let's delete that. Let's delete this, and let's call it. So go equals forecast SL. There it is. And if I, if I come back just one, you'll see my notes. So current month, start month, end month, budget month, length in months, SL, open parentheses, and so it first goes the current month. I'm gonna lock in the, the row one, two times, comma, start month, lock in the column, one, two, three F4s. Then end month, lock in the, col uh, the column, one, two, 
three F4s, and then we go budget, and then we go length. Close parentheses, copy this out to the right, and sure enough, it forecasted on a straight line basis. Now, as I think about this, I do straight line. I also do S-curve, and S-curve uses three norm dist functions. Uh, it's quite complex. What I currently do when I, when I create my uh, S-curve is I actually go back to my S-curve model, and I grab the formula there because it's so complex, I never remember it. Now I can create my own custom function for forecasting on a straight line basis, forecasting on a S-curve basis, uh, and... Uh, not have to remember the complex logic behind that so long as that lambda function is built correctly in the first place. So again, that's using Excel's new and beta lambda feature for real estate financial modeling. Let me know if, if you have any questions about this or, or if you're equally as excited about this function as I am, uh, please comment in, uh, down below. Otherwise, thanks for your time.